Alright guys, so we are taking a look at a game that I played, implementing a variation of the Fast Castle Mongol build that I recently posted on my channel. If you haven't already, go check that out. Uh, it was the video I posted before this one. Uh, but we're going to take a look at this game. We're going to kind of, I'm going to talk through my thought process as the game progresses. Um, in this particular one, it wasn't a naked Fast Castle, so I did make units in Feudal. And I'll run through my decision making as to why I made that decision and also like why I made the units that I did. So this was the first game of my final series in the qualifiers up against Davoy. Davoy actually managed to beat the top seed, um, which was Kelazer, a very good uh, Starcraft player, I've been told. And so he knocked him out and we're versing him in the finals here. So the first map, obviously Dry Arabia, he's playing the English, I'm playing the Mongols. Um, so we're just doing the same opening as what we did before. The only difference is we're not getting the extra hundred wood for a Gur because this gold mine is close enough. Obviously it's not right next to my TC, unfortunately. But it's close enough to justify not making a good. If it was one more tile away, or maybe two more tiles away, I would definitely put down a good so you're not uh, distance mining so far. And also another thing I did in this game um, that's different to my build order. I believe I keep it here. Um, so I built the pasture next to my TC rather than on top of the ovu. And the reason is the ovu is very expo exposed. And there was not, it was not really a good position for me to put my TC anywhere close to it. So it's out front. I've, I'm very conscious of that in this game. Um, and it's something you should be considering as well. If you are playing the Mongols, if, if your opponent scout came along and like walked past the pasture as it, as it was producing a sheep, they would actually be able to steal it. So that's why I'm keeping it at home in this game. Um, and I kept one guy on wood. Uh, this is just because I didn't have to build a go. I can build a tower if necessary early on. Um, and I haven't scouted what he's doing yet. So at the moment, I just prioritize getting sheep, come back to my base, and then I'll go and scout what he's doing. Because you never know with English these days. Sometimes they go with a greedy opening like this, as Darvoy's done. He's gone for like a full mill and farm opening, which isn't terrible. He went for... Well, he didn't go for wheelbarrow. Maybe he's going for a delayed wheelbarrow here. Nonetheless, our goal as Mongols is always to be getting up to castle as safely as possible. So I'm just keeping that in mind. Just going to fast for a little bit. We have 10 on food. So my macro is a little bit different in this one just because we didn't have to build the extra... The extra gear here. Um, so it does differ slightly from the build order that I um, put in my guide. I also refined that uh, build a little bit just so it's just easy to follow step by step on the guide rather than um, just kind of winging it. So we're going out with deer stones, four villages on it. And we're coming out to tower our ovu. So the reason I'm coming out and towering the ovu right now is because I know it's very exposed, right? I also, I, I know he's on his way up now, so I want to get it up before he has any units out. If he was getting up earlier, I probably would have gone out to this a little bit sooner and just put that out um, even earlier. But I mean, I saw his age time and I was sure that no longbows were going to be coming across and like preventing me from getting a tower up. So this scout is here though, well played by him. Um, I am going to have to pull this guy back just so I don't lose him. I mean, it was very close call. I wasn't sure if I was going to get it up, so I pulled him back, and I'm sending out a new one to finish it off. And I think you'll see here, actually, I definitely wouldn't have got it done before. So I've gotten information as to what he started. I went across and scouted after I initially brought back the sheep. And I know he's going for a more greedy opening. Going for lots of farms. We're going for a tower and a second pasture here. I know I'm not under any immediate threat right now. I also need to go back to his base because I need to see what he's making. I know he's about to age up at around this time, so I'm coming back across to see what he's making. 
And this is hugely important, especially in this build order, is knowing what your opponent's doing and being able to adapt accordingly. And as you can see, like, Davo is putting down a stable, and I'm coming across to see uh, what he's making. I start with a stable because it's a pretty safe option, but um, I can always cancel that and rebuild something else if I see Scout. Um, if I scouted a Rax, I probably would have deleted it and gone full Archers. Actually, I probably would have just not made any units if I scouted a Rax. I would have made uh, just an Aeroslitz Tower would have been fine to deal with that. Maybe made a second one, depending on how heavy it was on Pikes. But usually they're not going to be able to get a crazy amount out with uh, one Rax. So we're going with a stable here. We've scouted a stable. We've scouted that he's making longbows as well. And what count as longbow horsemen? More horsemen. <laughs> so we're going to utilize the double production here of our horsemen. Um, we're also got Aeroslitz on the the tower up here. So when we know that this position is not really going to be under threat with the use of Aeroslitz and horsemen. So I'm double producing horsemen. I'm going with four horsemen and then upgrading. Not a huge deal in what, you know, what order you d decide to do this in. And I have seven on wood right now. I'm also, now that I'm putting more guys on gold, I wanted to put a gear so I didn't have this inefficiency of them having to walk forward and back. Plus, once I age up, this gear can be used for the wood line here. As you can see, people are starting to move pretty far deep into the uh, forest. And I kept the Khan like out front of his base just to know when his unit's coming and how many of his units are coming. Um, so we're going to continue producing horsemen here. We're moving our deer stones a little bit forward. So we have that EM aura all the way up to the tower. Honestly, this probably wasn't really that necessary. But I've seen he's gone like pretty heavy into his units here. So I decided to go for a second stable just to be safe. Um, just in case he ended up making a second stable and producing out producing horsemen. He's coming in trying to seize down this outpost. He knows if this if he gets this outpost down, he has a good chance of denying my Ovu. So I just garrison my horseman in the tower just so he can't kill it. So we also get to take down a longbow, which is really nice. We have three passes right now. So we know we can't afford to go out onto the map because of the longbows. Um, so we want to make sure we have enough food here. And now you can see, like, it's pretty close to the build order that I described in terms of the macro. Uh, 7 on gold and then 15 on food right now and then 7 on wood. In my build order I do 6. 6 or 7 is fine. It's, it's not a huge deal. We're also going to go for another tower because I don't know how aggressive he's going to be. He could come in this way and, like, snipe some of my bills with his longbows. So we're building an extra tower here to defend our food source and our wood line as well. We're continuing to produce horsemen because I know he's going quite aggressive right now. And we have eight horsemen compared to his five and nine longbows. So we're looking to take a little fight here. I actually wasn't sure like how this would go. I, I figured it would be a pretty even fight. But the thing about me engaging and fighting him is he's probably going to commit like quite heavily into feudal or at least a fair bit more so I don't, can't do like any counter push or anything like that but the way I'm microing this as well is I'm trying to bring my horseman onto his longbows attack move which means that all the long uh the horsemen are going to attack the nearest unit which means that like when, when you get a surround on the longbow they're going to be hitting all the longbows rather than the horsemen as you can see a lot of them are heavily damaged right here um we did end up losing a I guess slightly more units, but the next fight we take, like, he has so many low units right now. So it, it's around this stage where I'm like, okay, I want to get up pretty soon. So I'm going to double produce two more horsemen just so, just to make sure that this spot, this position doesn't get denied. And then we're going to look at getting up. As you can see, I do overgather a gold a little bit. So I get wheelbarrow in transition as well. And that just, that just came from me having to produce more horsemen than I initially anticipated. And as you can see, we like one shot a bunch of those longbowmen due to them being really low health. And right now we're in a good position. So Darvo obviously looking to age up as well, but he's still quite a bit away. So we are going to get up to Castle Age before him. 
Building the step route out with 15 villagers, I think I'd take a few off because maybe is a bit much or I wanted to produce lances early so this position doesn't get denied at all. But I realized that he's probably looking at getting up because his mass wasn't significantly, well it wasn't growing basically. I could tell he cut units and when I thought to myself, okay he's cutting units so he's probably looking at aging up himself, I just took some of the vills off the step right out. Um, as I knew he was disengaging and going back to base. So from this position right now, I'm thinking, okay, there's a few things I want to do. First is I want to get out onto the map and I want to start taking relics. So I'm not sure how quickly I build the pro tent here. I'm pretty sure it's pretty quickly. Firstly, I'm making knights. Um, I don't double produce because I didn't have the stone only because I made a lot of double horsemen here. And we're going straight for the prayer tent here. We want to get out on the map and get as many, rel many relics as possible. And one thing about Mongols is if you have like some sort of map control, which at this, at this stage we do because we know he's aging up, um, is we can collect all the relics really fast because we can move the prayer tent. Um, so your monk doesn't have to walk all the way back home, drop it off, walk back out. So we know he's probably trying to age up right now. So I'm looking for a counter push. We only have one Lancer advantage here, um, which isn't crazy, but we're going to go look and take advantage of that and see what we can see if we can get any damage done. Davoy opting to go for full Lancers as well when he's aging up. Um, we do scout this once we come in and attack here. If we go to here, see more stables being added here. Okay, he's going, he's going full Knight. So we can stick to Knights for a bit longer. Um, we don't have to transition into anything else right now. We want to use that mobility. And as you can see, something I mentioned in my guide as well, is we are building towers out on relics. This is for two things, to secure relics, secure and secure vision across the map. Not only that, but Mongols being Mongols, they get Yam Network as well. So this is going to speed up my army, which basically means like, at any point when I don't have the numbers to take a good fight, I can just move back and if I'm near a tower, I can just run faster than my opponent. That on top of the maneuver arrow with the Khan, like you shouldn't have any issues. Um, so I double produce shamans here and I am moving out to get these relics straight away. I'm going for the furthest ones, or at least the ones in the middle, because I know they, they're most likely to be contested, rather than this one at back at home, and this one on the edge. I do lose a bill getting this tower up, but not the end of the world. We have Vision, we have Yam here now as well, and we've picked up both the relics. And as you can see, we didn't quite have the numbers that we needed. Um, so we were able to back off pretty easily due to the EM network. We have more lances coming, so we can take a fight now. Dropped off the, the relics in the prayer tent. Oh no, what am I doing? Hello, Snooper, wake up. It ends up being a decent fight for us anyway. I think we have the same amount of knights. Getting spring old emplacements here as well. And I'm just moving out with my build, placing more towers to get more vision on the map. It's a little bit sloppy, I did lose my Khan. It takes some time to get used to like always using the Khan um, and always being conscious that you're not losing it. But we're moving out, picking up more relics, bringing them back. And I know I'm getting a crazy instant eco boost from these relics. I know he's on two TCs, but I also know that that takes a little while to kick in compared to getting relics where you're going to get gold straight away. Um, and I'm continuing to put towers near the sacred sites and just all across the map. So I know what he's doing at all times. Um, right now as well, off the back of this, we had the correct uh, villager distribution and something I mentioned in my build order guide as well is that you really want to have, make sure you have enough guys on wood. Um, the reason being is you want to be able to afford to spend all your resources. If you don't have enough military, just like any other Civ, but I feel like Mongols is a bit more extreme due to the step right out bonus eco straight away when you age, as well as getting all these relics in. Um, so you just want to make sure you have enough guys on wood to build these. 
I'm also getting going to get advanced siege engineering very soon. I didn't have stone straight away, so I went for the archer attack straight away, um, which will boost my crossbows that I'm currently producing, or will start producing any second now. And another thing we did in this game, I know he's on two TCs, right? So my, my first priority was to get map control, secure the relics, and then off the back of that, I added in my own second TC just so he didn't outscale me. I also dropped a bunch more pastures. This is not ideal. These should be rallied. All of them should be rallied to the TC so you're not gathering this far. It's not the biggest deal with Mongols um, because you have Yam and Wheelbarrow. But it's still an issue, right? It's still not as efficient as if they were right next to your TC. I've also started getting all my tier 1 upgrades. The only one I don't have is Specialized Pick. Um, and we're just trying to see if we can get any raids in here. We did lose a knight here, but um, not the end of the world. We have a tower not yet built, but being built. Um, and right now you can see that like we have vision of pretty much anywhere where he decides to exit the base with the exception of this one point here. Um, and my goal is right now is to get cr a massive crossbows to deal with effectively counter the knights, but more importantly to also build siege on the field. So we're just producing crossbows now. We got advanced siege engineering coming in. Our OV ran out, so we are building a new one over here. And we're now double producing, well, we're producing from two TCs. And right now we're just like roaming around the map, seeing if we can pick off anything, any stray knights or anything like that. And I've kind of caught his attention over here and I've pulled a few other knights to go around and flank it around the back. He's not going to, he's less likely to notice the attack notification if I'm attacking him at the front. Um, and these two knights can sneak around and do some damage. As you can see, we've spotted a siege workshop. We're also killing a bunch of bills here. Meanwhile, he's preoccupied with the knights over here. He does, he hasn't noticed yet. I think this knight got lucky or he's just decided not to pull his bills back. I'm not really sure. Um, and we take a little fight here. We, we notice we don't have the right numbers to fight them. So we're just running away with the EM network. We got a bunch of ill kills over there, um, which is worth definitely worth two nights um, if we're getting like four or five ill kills. Um, and we're just continuing to transition the crossbows here. As you notice, we're also prioritizing blacksmith upgrades. Ideally, um, you would have like more because I have I'm floating gold. Uh, but you know, sometimes you just you're not on top of everything straight away. Um, so I'm just getting ready. I know my win condition is to mass siege and just beat him that way. I also scouted that he's going into like a full barrack switch, which can mean one of two things. He's either going men at arms of his own, which I already have an answer for, but I didn't want to take a gamble if he was going mass pike because I am heavy in lances. Um, so I drop a bunch of barracks and I start producing men at arms because pikes obviously don't deal well with that men at arms. They don't do much damage to them and men at arms do decent damage to them as well. Whereas lances kind of melt really fast if that's all your front line. You just want to make sure you have the protection for your siege. Um, so he's trying to regain some of the map control, um, sieging down the front tower. I know I don't have the numbers initially until I build these mangonels. So I just let that one go down and then I pick off a few knights with some crossbows, mangonels and knights. Um, and I continue, I pick up the last relic on the map and then there's basically just one sacred site, which I think I forget to get this game. Um, but nonetheless, I'm amassing men at arms, crossbow, and these are just excess knights. I don't think I'm training any more knights from this point on um, because I'm going for the like a big push right now and Extra lances are nice, but they're not going to be as effective as if I mass crossbows as well. And honestly, at this stage, you can see like my, my gold income is like really crazy right now, even though I have 11 bills on it. Um, so I could have just traded some of this, this uh, gold and produced more men at arms or more crossbows. Also could have got more blacksmith upgrades, getting tier two of the arrow attack right now. 
And we could have got some more eco techs. Oh, we are getting more eco techs. So we're looking to flank around with our knights here. Actually, this is a really important point, and I think I just missed it. Ah, I totally missed it. Ah, that's annoying. But as you can see, um, I have vision all around his base. And I saw that lancers were coming, or knights, English knights were coming around this side. And I saw they're probably going to come for a raid. So what I did was, and as you can see here, these guys are still building it, is I built a bunch of towers just so I have enough um, garrison room for all my villagers. And then I went for a counterattack. I didn't go, oh crap, knights are coming to my base. I'm going to retreat and come all the way back to deal with this. I just thought I didn't even have the knights to deal with them like face to face. So I just thought I'm, I'm just going to counter push. Like he's, his knights are out of position right now. I dropped a bunch of towers, so I'm not really under threat. Well, most of my villagers aren't under threat. If I lose like five hills, that's fine. Cause I know that I can do more damage on the front. I know I can wipe out his whole army, idle a bunch of his villagers and potentially kill a bunch of the villagers. So we are going for the counter push right now with our mangonels, spring olds, just in case he makes spring olds. And to be honest, I was going to build more, but I, I had to capitalize on him being out of position right now. And I'm just looking to engage right now. And as you can see, like these knights, they can't really get a whole heap of damage done. I think they ki he kills a few vills, right? And then I garrison everything. So he's killed what, like four, five, six vills. And to be honest, I'm perfectly okay with that. We killed a bunch of his, we killed like half of his army already. And he has nothing to do with this. He has a bunch of pikes, a few spring olds. And I'm just in his base. Like, he's going to struggle um, quite heavily here. He does snipe out my mangonels, but I'm okay with that. Because he doesn't have anything to do with the rest of my army. So these men at arms, these knights can just go throughout his base, kill all of his villagers. He only has two TCs to garrison in. So he's like, oh, this is over now. Like he's going to kill all my eco. And he taps out. And that was GG. Um, hopefully you found this helpful, guys. Hopefully this was insightful as to how you can potentially play Mongols yourself. And how you can optimize your build in order to get up to castle safely and capitalize on the advantages that Mongols get. Alright guys, hopefully you enjoyed this and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace out.